no surprise, plenty of callers for you this morning. Joel in the Natural State Mountain Home. Republican, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you all doing this morning? Doing well. Go ahead. Okay. As a retired Army sergeant, I served more than 22 years defending this country. I served in Korea. I served in Vietnam and several other countries. They all had borders, and they secured their borders. You could not enter that country without a passport. Now, what is happening to our country today is a, is a mockery of the men who fought and served for this country to secure this country. We got a president that doesn't care. It's the new world order. They're sending their people here. And I understand them people want to come here. It's the right way to come here. I have two sons. They're worried about their jobs. They're worried that some people are going to come here and take their job, and they'll probably have to train them to take their job. This is a disgrace, and we are laughing mockery of our great country. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way. Joe Biden needs to be impeached. We just keep talking and talking and talking. And on, on your subject about... Well, let me take up those issues with the congressman. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, first of all, I don't think this is carelessness or, or recklessness on the part of the president. I think this is a deliberate policy. Uh, uh, that, that's been very, very clear. But the people I've found who are the angriest about illegal immigration are legal immigrants who obeyed all of our laws, who waited patiently in line, who did everything our country asked of them, and they're now watching millions of illegal immigrants cut in line in front of them. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's an affront to the rule of law, and it is a direct threat to our country's survival, as you point out. History is pretty clear on two subjects. Uh, number one, countries that uh, either cannot or will not defend their borders aren't around very long, and countries that bankrupt themselves aren't around very long. And we're doing both right now in real time, and it's, it's on our generation's watch. It's our generation's responsibility uh, to reverse this before it brings down what Lincoln called uh, the last best hope of mankind on this earth. When you tell the caller he's right, is he right when he says that President Biden needs to be impeached? You know, impeachment is reserved for treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, I think the appropriate thing to do is now that we have a uh, slim majority in the House to use the power of the purse to restrict these policies, to adopt out of the House uh, those laws that need to be changed, and await the American people's response in delivering a Senate and a president that will actually make and enforce these laws. To New Jersey, this is Johnny Independent. Good morning. You're on with Congressman McClintock. Hi. So I think if we're that worried about uh, people fleeing their countries of origin and coming here, wouldn't we want to stop the economic plundering of those countries? Wouldn't we want to stop the structural adjustments? Wouldn't we want to just clean the debt, you know, and allow these people to have the sovereignty over their own country to set the prices for their natural resources that is fair to them so that way they can actually be able to have an economy to provide for their people? Well, there are billions of people on this planet who live in, uh, in poverty and in violence. Um, if we were to admit all of them into this country, this country would no longer exist. That's why we have immigration laws, not to keep people out, but to assure that as people come to America, they come with a sincere desire to become Americans, to raise their children as Americans, to adopt a, a common language, a common culture, and a common appreciation of American constitutional and founding principles. Uh, illegal immigration undermines that entire process of legal immigration that makes our, our country possible in the first place, and that, that provides a hope for those who are actually targeted uh, for uh, 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 oppression by their own governments. So that's what asylum's for. It's not for people who simply want to come to the United States uh, uh, because it's a great country. It's there specifically for, for those people who have been targeted by their government. And the moment that they cross the first border as they leave the jurisdiction of that government, uh, they have now separated themselves from that government, and their only right to asylum is in that country, not, not to cross through five or six countries to come to the United States, not because they've been targeted by their government, but simply because they want a better future.
Austin, Texas. Gus is a Democrat. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. I'd like to ask the, your uh, spokesman there, uh, how would he like to be told where he belongs? We're supposed to be a free country, freedom and justice for all. And okay. if we don't have a, a border, we don't have a state. How about uh, uh, we we don't have borders, we don't have states in this country? You know, it should be the United States of North, Central, and South America. By now, Mexico should be part of us and the rest of the Latin countries. That's how you beat China, not keeping people from not being free. We came over and slaughtered the Indians. The Mexicans aren't coming over here and slaughtering white people. They're coming here working hard, putting the produce on our shelves, working hard, and you're trying to keep them out. Congressman. Well, that is certainly the dominant view of the Democratic Party today. I think you've uh, summed it up uh, uh, very, very well. Uh, I just wholeheartedly disagree with it. Uh, a country without borders is no longer a country at all. Uh, you know, our, ours is uh, uh, a, a shining beacon on a hill. Um, uh, our, our constitutional principles, um, you know, our reliance on individual liberty and, uh, and, and constitutionally limited government has produced the happiest and most prosperous and most successful civilization in human history. Uh, dissolve those borders and you destroy all of that which is unique uh, about America. But what you've summed up is exactly what I hear from the Democrats in Congress. Uh, I, I have to compliment you on, on putting it so succinctly. But I would also add we're not only a, a nation of, of, of liberty and justice, we are a nation of laws. Uh, and we insist that those who come to our country obey our laws. And everyone who crosses that border without permission has committed a, a crime uh, and an affront to the laws of our country and, and to the sovereignty of our nation. Uh, Congressman McClintock with us for about 10 more minutes in uh, a little less than 12 hours from now, we're set to hear from the president at the uh, from the House chamber at the United States Capitol, uh, the State of the Union address tonight. We've been talking to viewers this morning uh, about this question. Does a State of the Union address still matter today? I wonder how you'd answer that question. I think so. Uh, and, and again, I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not likely to be doing much applauding to what the president says. We'll see what he says, but I don't anticipate doing much. Um, but it is an important function within our, our, our constitutional framework. The president reports from time to time to the Congress on the State of the Union. Um, uh, uh, that uh, is part of the constitutional dialogue uh, that, uh, that makes our country uh, uh, free and, and, and gives us the fodder to, uh, to resolve our differences. Uh, uh, you have to lay out your, your, where you stand. I just am hoping that the president will take a page from Bill Clinton's book when after he lost the House of Representatives, uh, uh, appeared before the Congress and, and, and said, you know, these policies aren't working. I get it. Um, uh, uh, the era of big government is over, his exact words. And then he reached across the aisle and worked with Republicans to uh, 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 reduce uh, 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 taxes to um, uh, restrain federal spending. Actually, we reduced federal spending by 3% of GDP uh, in those years under Bill Clinton. Um, uh, and to, to end welfare as we know it, stop paying able-bodied people not to work, uh, or at least to look for work. Um, uh, so that's what I hope he does. Uh, and, and, and if he does, it'll be a phenomenally successful term, and you'll probably be reelected, just as Bill Clinton was. Uh, I'm afraid, though, that's not in his nature. I'm afraid what we're going to see is doubling down on very bad policies uh, that um, uh, you know, have, have been, well, n n to a point where now three quarters of Americans uh, say the country's going in the wrong direction. Plenty of callers still waiting to chat with you. Robert in Indiana, Republican. Good morning. You're on with Congressman McClintock. Yes, thanks for letting me call in. Mr. McClintock, you were right on the money. We need a change in our government, and I don't think the Democrats are going to work with you because Biden does not know what he's doing. We've got a bunch of idiots. They, I hear these Democrats calling in, and they make no sense whatsoever. You've got to have your borders correct, and Trump had it in order. But they just keep riding him. He's been out of office two years.